How's everyone doing? This is Noah with the Life of the Zigs coming at you with another video about rebuilding your deck. Not from scratch though, so we're going to leave the uh, actual skeleton of it, the joists, the beams, um, but kind of fix up everything else and make it look nice and good. So uh, let's get started here. <music> So as always, I like to give some before and after pictures or shots. So here's some before pictures of the deck before I really started any of my projects. And here are the after shots. Uh, turned out really good. I was happy with it and made it look good and wasn't too expensive. So the first step to this project was replacing the 4x4 posts holding up the deck, the support beams, supporting beams. Uh, right here, real quick, you see me actually screwing in 6 inch long lag self uh, self drilling screws into the beams just to give it a little bit extra support uh, as i'm going to be taking some of the posts out and putting new ones in it was key for me to replace these posts because i wanted them to be even all throughout the 10 foot span of the deck also according to my neighbors this deck was roughly about eight five to eight years old they couldn't really remember but that is part of the reason why i'm leaving a lot of the bones of the deck and not replacing it because it didn't look too terrible. It was a little beat up, but nothing too, too bad. I want to show you guys the footing I used for this deck. It's actually a composite based pad, 12 inch pad. And you put the four by four right on that. You dig down to the depth you need to be at, which was about 20 inches for me, which is frost level where I'm at. And then you set the pad down, you put two, two by fours across the four by four, like in the picture, and then you put it up and it was super easy super sturdy and no issues out of that again here just continuing replacing those posts this post right here sadly it was the hardest to replace because i had concrete on one side retaining wall on the other so i used the footing pad that was already in there but i just took the old one out and i had no issues out of doing that one thing i also want to touch on too i'm using treated four by fours uh, about somewhere 10 foot in length somewhere shorter as you can see i got varying lengths Biggest thing is though, you want to go down 20 inches below grade for myself, which is the frost line. So wherever you're at, just Google it and you'll figure out what your frost line is and how far you need to dig. Another thing I want to touch upon is I'm using PVC covers that usually go on fence posts to actually cover up the 4x4s. I chose to do this one to give it some longer longevity. Two, I like the look. I think it looks a lot better than just painted wood or wood in general. And it will match my uh, top railing on the deck when I get the whole project done. Another thing too is I am using metal brackets to actually mount the post to the deck currently as you can see in the picture. It's about you know four inch wide by four inch wide bracket and it's meant to mount four by four posts to a deck. Pick them up at Lowe's or Home Depot and I'll link them in the description down below. Replacing these posts was probably the hardest part of this whole deck rebuild here. I hand dug all the holes myself with a shovel uh, and a pole, post hole digger. It was really uh, labor intensive and time demanding, but between the four posts, I got them done in two, two and a half days. I think they're about 10 hour uh, days a piece. So you can do it by yourself, but just know if you have an extra hand, it's going to help make the make it faster and not as hard on your body. I'm starting to wrap up with the posts here, getting done for the day and cleaned up, and now about to move on to working on the actual deck. So the next step here, like any big project, is demo. So I'm removing those metal handrails with the Sawzall and a grinder, using the grinder to grind down those nubs and the concrete. I'm just gonna put the new post I'm gonna put up right over those holes and you won't even see them. Continuing on, removing the railing for the deck. This is all wood deck. It was all treated wood that eventually got painted red. And as you can tell, and that's why I'm doing this project, I didn't like it. It was a little rotted in some places and pretty beat up. Now I'm working on removing the deck boards itself. These deck boards were mostly nailed down. Uh, there were some screws scattered throughout. So the nails made it easy. The screws made it hard trying to figure out where the screws were and then unscrewing them individually. The reason why I am going uh, away from where my staircase is is because I have my trailer on the parked on the other side and I'm throwing all the debris from the deck in the trailer. So no, it's not because I didn't think of it. I thought of it and make sure when you're taking off your deck boards, it's the most convenient way for you, which for me was going off the back there, having my trailer there, throw all the 
scrap and debris in there and then take that right to the dump after this. Also, if you're doing it the way I did it, make sure you have a ladder at the end, which thankfully I did to help me get down. Next step here is to just kind of clean everything up, clean up all the wood scrap, screws, dirt, debris, anything on the deck, make it nice and smooth on the top there. Uh, one thing I didn't do, which if I could do it again, I would do is put down that rubberized tape you put on uh, deck boards. Now it kind of protects them from water and moisture damage. I did not do that, but uh, I definitely would if I did it again. But I will throw that in the link in the description down below. Right now, I'm just putting some screws in a couple of the boards, making them nice and sturdy and firm. I do already have joist hangers on the deck I put on a while back, so I didn't need to do that. Uh, and right now I'm just using two by fours to just put some bracing in the middle of the deck, keep it from moving around a bit. Again, I probably would have done this before I take, took off the top boards. Uh, I, again, I just didn't really think of it until after the fact and I was, it was a little wobbly and I was like, oh, I probably should put some bracing in between. So that's why I'm putting it in now, made sure it's nice and even and plumb on both sides. You just measure across both ways to make sure that you're not uh, uneven in any way, shape or form. Next step here is to cover up everything with tarps and painter's tape because I'm gonna paint the rest of that deck. Any of the wood I left, I chose to paint. Painted a nice cowboy brown color using a Valspar, Valspar outdoor paint. The reason I did this is I want to protect that wood and keep it from rotting anymore. Like I said, there were a couple pieces I had to fix, but overall it was in pretty good shape and didn't have to replace much. The easiest way to go about painting this deck in my mind is uh, using it airless sprayer which i have a Graco magnum airless sprayer just a residential version i've used it on a lot of projects and it worked really good for this i'll throw that in the link down below in the description down below i just drop the tube in the bucket and spray away made it really easy up top there when i was spraying i just used a piece of plywood and slid it across the deck while i was painting and then i came down below and sprayed from down below on the boards as you can see just covering all the boards a nice thick coat keep them well protected and then flipping to the other side and doing the other side after all the spraying was done time to clean up so i clean up my sprayer again easy to clean up just drop that tube in water and run the water through and if you're going to store it for a long time put the pump saver in it which is just an anti-freeze uh, chemical mixture that doesn't allow the pump to freeze up now this is where the fun part starts. I'm actually going to start putting deck boards on. So I had my trailer there, pulled it over right close to the deck and started laying the boards long ways on the deck. I felt this was the easiest for me and the least amount of measuring and drawing and calculations had to be done. A big thing you need to remember though when you're putting new deck boards down is measuring to see where the last deck board is going to land. So I measured and I knew that if I put a full deck board starting against the wall there with the spacing I had, which I think was about an eighth of an inch or a quarter, quarter inch, I think it was a quarter inch gap I used between each board for expansion and contraction, uh, that the last deck board would land about an inch short and then I would take a piece of wood and basically finish off to make it nice and flush at that corner there at the end of the deck. The deck boards I used were Trex decking, that composite decking that everyone loves near and dear now. I chose to use it, I've never used it before, and it worked out pretty good, it screwed in nice. I used the camo fastener system, which you can find on Amazon, which I'll put in the description down below. And that worked out really good. Essentially, it's a jig that you put on the deck board <clears throat> and it puts a screw at an angle in each corner of the deck board onto each joist. So it hides the screw because it puts it in the side, but it also is still nice and secure. It doesn't go through too much because that jig stops the screw at a certain point. The other nice thing with using that camo fastener jig is it does the spacing for you because you need to leave, like I said, about an eighth inch or quarter inch thick space in between each board. One, to allow rainwater to fall through. Two, because boards expand and contract with the heat throughout the seasons and the day. So if you don't leave an expansion joint, you will actually have your boards warping more and 
just making a huge mess and it won't look good. So always make sure to leave an expansion joint in between each board. Going back to the Trex composite decking, one thing I do want to say I love it overall, it's way better than wood, but there are two cons in my mind. The first con is the price of it. It is like double or triple the amount of your standard deck board. And the other con is that it gets really hot when the sun beats on it. Maybe it was just the color I had, that brown color, but it got really hot, way more heat than any regular wood deck board would have. Um, Cause sometimes I'd walk out barefoot on the deck just to grab something or whatever. And I just could not do that with that composite deck. It was way too hot. So just to keep that in mind, if you do choose to or want to use composite deck, maybe that's not the best idea if you have kids that are going to run around on it barefoot because it gets really hot. So continuing here, I'm just slapping a board on and screwing it down. This process went by really fast. One, because I had the jig and two, I had the boards right there. So it was just really easy. Slide them on, uh, put the jig on and screw it in. I didn't have to make too many cuts with the wood because I just lined it up on the one side and then the on the other side, the further side of the deck, I just took my saw and cut the pieces that were extended off the deck later on when I was all done putting all the boards down. Coming to this last board here, I had to make a few cuts in it to fit around the posts. Not really hard, you just take your board, you line it up where it's going to be on the deck and then you just draw out where you need to cut and then make the cut with the multi-tool or your chop saw. Uh, so here you see I'm cutting that one side down, making it flush and then the other side I'm cutting with the circular saw. I really should have used uh, like a jig to keep the saw nice and straight. It did come out slightly uneven but you don't really notice it. Um, once I got the facade boards up. Speaking of the facade boards, uh, I know some people use the actual composite decking itself uh, as the facade on the sides. I chose to use a one by 10 that was treated. I thought this was just the easiest for me. Uh, it just worked out the best that way and, and it was hundreds of dollars cheaper than choosing to use a composite facade. We also decided at this point that we were actually gonna end up selling the house. So. We figured, uh, you know, might as well save a little money that way. And then the next owner, if they come in, they can obviously change it over to composite if they want. The next step here, what I'm doing is I'm putting up the railing. This is one of the last steps in the project. It was really easy. I got this railing from Home Depot, I believe. Uh, I'll put it in the description down below, put a link for it. It was really easy. It comes in uh, like a pre uh, package and then you actually take the deck and assemble it all together, which... As you can see me here, I'm measuring, cutting, and then putting all the railings in, and then you just mount it to the posts with uh, some wood screws. Also, you need to make sure you buy the sleeves separately and the bottom covers for the sleeves, the skirts, I guess you can call them. All that separate, and as well as the tops for all the posts are separate, so you just gotta make sure you get all those parts, which again, any local big box hardware store will have them. All right, so now that we're coming to an end in the video, a couple things I wanna talk about. The first thing is that you'll notice in the beginning of the video, all underneath of the deck was basically just dirt, and then once I start working on the top, you know, it looks nice, finished with some rock and retaining wall. I'm going to put another video out there on what I did down below the deck. I just figured it would be better to make it a separate video just because this one's already kind of long. The second thing is, is why I chose not to replace any of the beams or uh, bracing, uh, you know, the skeleton of the deck per se. Uh, the reason was, is just cost. Uh, it was going to be expensive, uh, like $1,000 more, and it would be a couple more days worth of time, which I didn't have then. And like I said, we did decide to move, so we figured, you know what, let's fix it up, make it look nice. The wood's not in that bad of a shape, so that's why we chose to just leave it the way it was. All right, the last step here, just putting up the railing on the stairs. Uh, the same company that makes the railing makes these wonderful metal posts that just basically tap calm into the concrete, or it goes into wood, however you want to do it. I just chose to use the metal post because it was easier than using like a wood 4x4 and mounting that to the concrete. Real easy process, you put four screws into the ground with a post there, you level it out, then you slide the cover on and mount the railing to it and put the caps on and then you're all done. Alright guys, so with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video on how I refinished my old deck. Uh, if you got any questions or comments, please leave them down in the comment section be below. Please remember to like, share the video, subscribe, and uh, I'll get another video out here shortly, guys. Thanks for watching.